What's up guys, in this video we'll be building the back end of our Flask application to host our fine tuned VGG16 Keras model to predict on images of cats and dogs. And in general you should be able to take our approach here and apply it to any model you'd like. So let's get to it. At this point, we should be generally comfortable with Flask given our two simple applications we've built so far. Remember from the first video in this series, I showed you a sneak peek of what our application would look like that uses a Keras model to predict on cat and dog images. We select an image of a cat or dog, press predict, and then get predictions from our model. We'll be developing the backend of this application using Flask in this video. From your Flask apps directory, go ahead and create a predict underscore app dot pi file just as I have here. This will be the code for the web service we'll develop. Additionally, place your fine-tuned VGG16 model in the form of an H5 file within this directory as well. Now let's jump into the code for our predict app. We'll be making use of several dependencies, so go ahead and get all of those imported up top. Then we create an instance of the Flask class with this app variable as per usual. Next, we have a function called get underscore model that's going to load our VGG16 model into memory. All this function does is define this global variable called model and sets it equal to the Keras function load model, which is passed the file name of the H5 file for which we saved our model. Remember, this is the model I pointed to a few moments ago in our Flask apps directory. Once this model is loaded, the function prints a message letting us know. Then we have this function called preprocess image, which accepts an instance of a pill image, a Python image library image, and a target size for the image. This function preprocesses the supplied image to get it into the format it needs to be in before passing it to our Keras model. First, it checks to see if the image is already in RGB format, and if it's not, it converts it to RGB. Then it resizes the image to the specified target size. It then converts the image to a NumPy array and expands the dimensions of the image. The function then returns this pre-processed version of the image, which can now, in this format, be directly passed to our Keras model. Next, we print a message that states the Keras model is being loaded, and then we call get model to load our model into memory. We do this ahead of time so that the model's not having to be reloaded into memory each time a request comes into our endpoint. Next, we have the app route decorator, and we're creating this for a new endpoint called predict. This endpoint allows post requests as specified in the methods parameter, which makes sense because we'll need to be sending our image data to the endpoint to get a prediction. We then define this predict function for the predict endpoint. Within this function, we first define the variable message and set it equal to the JSON from the post request. And we cover the details of this line in part three of the series. Next, we define the variable called encoded, which is assigned the value associated with the key called image from the JSON data stored in the message variable. As you can see, we're setting this endpoint up to receive JSON data. And we're also setting it up to require the JSON to have at least one key value pair for which the key is called image. The value associated with this key should be a base64 encoded image sent by the client. So since this image data is encoded, we need to decode it. We define this variable called decoded and set it equal to base64.b64 decode and pass the encoded variable to it. So decoded will be assigned the decoded image data. Next, we define a variable called image and set it equal to an instance of a pill image. Image.open opens an image file. We have our image data in memory as bytes stored within the decoded variable, not in an actual file. So we need to wrap our bytes, the decoded variable, in io.bytes.io and pass that to image.open. Next, we create a variable called preprocessed image and set it equal to the function preprocessed image, which we covered at the start of our program. And we pass our image to this function along with the target size of 224 by 224, since that's the size VGG16 expects. We then create a variable called prediction and set it equal to model.predict. Remember, this model variable is global and was already initialized in the getModel function that was called at the top of our program. 
To the predict function, we pass our preprocessed image. Predict returns a NumPy array with the predictions. So we then call toList on prediction to convert the array into a Python list. This is required for the JSONify call we'll make later in the program. We then create this response variable, which we define as a Python dictionary. This is the response we plan to send back to the client with the cat and dog predictions for the original image. This dictionary has a key called prediction, which itself is a dictionary. Prediction contains a cat key and a dog key. The values for each of these keys will be the respective values returned by the model's prediction for each. So for example, for a given image, the model may assign a 95% probability to dog and 5% to cat. In this case, we'd want the value for the dog key to be 0.95 and the value for the cat key to be 0.05. To do this, we set the value for dog as the zeroth element of the zeroth list in the prediction list and the value for cat as the first element of the zeroth list in the prediction list. Since we're only predicting on one image, the prediction list will only contain one embedded list with a probability for dog and a probability for cat. Lastly, we then JSONify this response to convert this Python dictionary into JSON, and we return this JSON to the front end. So looking at this from a high level, everything we just went through should flow pretty intuitively. We have a message that comes in, we get the encoded image from the message, we decode it, we create an image object with the decoded message, we pre-process that image, pass it to the model for a prediction, and then send this prediction as JSON back to the client. So that's it for the back end. Let's go ahead and make sure we can run this thing. After exporting our new app and starting Flask, we should see the message that the Keras model is being loaded. This may take a few seconds. Then a message should display letting us know that the model was loaded successfully. After this, the ordinary messages from Flash should appear letting us know that our app is now running. Let me know in the comments if you're up and running successfully, and in the next video, we'll make the front-end web application to call our new predict endpoint. See you there.